Hello everyone and welcome to 40 Questions. Tonight I will be interviewing my very first guest, Luis Caballero. Hello, Luis. Hi. Uh, Luis, where are you from? I'm originally from Mexico. Mexico. And where is Mexico? Mexico is in North America. It is south of the United States. South of the United States and... And north of Guatemala. North of Guatemala. And it is in between the Gulf of Mexico, which is part of the Atlantic Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean. Okay. And what nationality are people from Mexico? People from Mexico are called Mexican people. Mexican. Mexican people, Mexican culture, Mexican food. Exactly. Uh, and the capital city of Mexico? The capital city of Mexico is Mexico City. Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And what is the population of Mexico City? The population of Mexico City is a little bit more than the population in Seoul, South Korea, which is right by where we are. Mm -hmm. So it's right about 26 million people. About 26 million people. There are 26 million people living in Mexico City. So that's maybe one of the largest in the world. Yeah, I think there are maybe only three or four other cities that are larger than Mexico City in the world. How about the population of Mexico? The country's total population, I think it's right about 130 million people. 130 million. Give or take. So, about million. three times the size of South Korea. That's right, yeah. yeah. Flags. Flags are very important parts of a country and their culture. What, what color is the Mexican flag? The Mexican flag is uh, three stripes. Uh, a red stripe, a white stripe, and a green stripe. Are they vertical or horizontal? They're vertical. So vertical they stripes? Up and down, yeah. Yeah, and then in the center, the center stripe is a white stripe, and the center stripe uh, has uh, uh, an like, emblem, a, like yeah. an emblem in it, yeah, of an eagle holding a serpent. Or uh, a snake. Standing on a cactus. Uh-huh. And is there meaning behind the flag? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. The, uh, the three stripes have their own meaning. Mm -hmm. the, the red is considered the color of sacrifice, like the color of blood. Okay. So the color of the people who in the past have sacrificed for the, the improvement of the country. Right. Uh, white is the symbol of unity okay because Mexico has many different cultures and many different people living in one country okay and then green is a color to expre express uh, the the future so like hope for the future hope for future living right. in Mexico and then the eagle has a significance it comes from a legend uh, a, a story that was told among the Aztec civilization, which okay. was a, uh, an ancient culture in Mexico. And it, the story, just the short version, is that the gods ha uh, had told uh, the Aztecs that they would send a symbol, um, and when they saw the symbol, they would know that this is where they must build their main city. And so the symbol that they were going to send was a, an eagle holding a serpent on a cactus. And oh, so cactus. That, was where, that was where the, the Aztecs uh, settled down, and, and that's kind of the origin of Mexico. Right, okay. So the cactus. There are obviously many, well, not obviously, but there are many cactus yes. in Mexico. Yes, throughout the country. Right. Appearance. What do the majority of Mexican men and women look like? The typical Mexican physical appearance yeah, is just tends to be um, someone with dark hair, mm -hmm. uh, someone with um, usually darker eyes, maybe a, a, a dark brown mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes light brown as well, um, and they tend to have um, kind of brown skin. Okay, um, tan, maybe, tan yeah, or skin. Maybe a tan, tan kind of a, a color to the skin. Um, that's not everyone in Mexico, right, but that right, is right. certainly maybe the typical, the typical, typical person in Mexico. Is. 
Next would be minority. Uh, what minorities live in Mexico? Uh, there are people who can trace their family ancestry back to uh, parts of Africa, for example, um, parts of Europe, usually Spain and France, but also other parts of Europe. Uh, before that, there were a lot of indigenous groups there, so and there still continues to be a very lively indigenous, uh, many indigenous communities living in Mexico. Okay, and Mexican food. Tell us one traditional food that people enjoy eating in Mexico. Uh, sure. Well, I think that most people, when they think of Mexican food, they think of tacos. Uh, tacos, okay. Which are made with a, a tortilla, which is like a flat, um, a, a flat wrap, uh, usually either made from corn or made from flour. Mm. And in a taco, there's usually uh, some type of meat, like chicken or pork or beef, right. and some vegetables, but usually um, onions and cilantro or coriander, as it's also sometimes called in English. Outside of Mexico, uh, people will, um, you know, usually put like lettuce or tomato on it. And cheese. Yeah, and cheese. In and Mexico, and sour is cream. it? Yeah, in Mexico, we use cheese and sour okay. cream as well, and obviously some type of uh, spicy salsa. Perhaps. So, if you've never had a Mexica, uh, a Mexican taco, <laughs> how how would you describe the taste? How does a taco taste? It's most people when they think about Mexican food, they think it's really spicy. Okay. And they can be spicy. A lot of I prefer for it to be spicy, but uh, you can also get tacos that are you know, vegetarian with no meat or uh, or also not spicy at all. So, but usually it's spicy or salty. Um, we like a lot of lime. Bit greasy. Things. It can be greasy. Yeah. Yes, especially the street food in Mexico City. And how about the smell? It How would you smells, describe a, the smell of a taco? It smells like you're constantly at a barbecue, like you're constantly okay. having a cookout in your backyard um, when you're when you're eating Mexican food or when you're at a Mexican restaurant. So right. You just, you just get a lot of uh, smoky, really full of flavor. You can taste it just by smelling it. What? Would you describe the texture to be like? You get a lot of different textures. Yeah. Um, because the first the tortilla is usually soft. Okay. Um, and the the meat, uh, I you know hopefully it's tender, so it's it's a very like a soft meat, easy mm -hmm. to bite into. Um, but then if you have onions, sometimes the onions might have a hard or a crunchy texture. And then the sour cream could be creamy, so you get a really just fantastic blend of flavors and textures. Good, okay, nice variety. Like yeah. What is the landscape like throughout the country? A uh, basic description. Sure. I mean, there's a there's a variety because the the country is a pretty large country as far as the the amount of space mm -hmm. that it that it takes up. So, but generally in the north, there tends to be a lot of deserts there. Okay. So very dry landscape. And and flat. I or yeah, it can be hilly flat, or more, uh, more in the toward the east side of of uh, of the north. So the northeast part maybe is it's definitely flatter right. than the west part because in the west part you'll have more mountains. Okay. Um, but you also have many mountains throughout the whole country. It's also surrounded by water on two sides because you have the two oceans. So uh -huh. there's a lot of beaches on the coast as well, sandy beaches. And then as you start moving uh, further south, you'll get more, uh, more plant life, more vegetation. Um, the, the farthest south that you go in Mexico, which is right on the border with Guatemala, that's where there's a lot of rainforest. Okay. And mountains too. All right, so a good variety. Certainly. And seasons, how many seasons are, do you find in Mexico? I would say there's four seasons. Are there four? But maybe the summers and the winters aren't very extreme. Um, I think that there's, uh, you know, there's cool, cool parts of the year and hot parts of the year. The thing that since there's so much desert in in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, the the, spr the the springs and the autumns might be pretty cool during the nighttime, and it can get pretty warm during the day. 
Okay, so four. But yeah, but four seasons. And the winter, do you do you receive snow? You usually won't get snow. Every once in a while you do, but usually there isn't too much snowfall in Mexico. But there are some mountains that are really high, and so you can get snow at the top of the mountains. So let's choose one season. What is your favorite season in Mexico? I think my favorite season might be spring time. So what is the weather like in the spring? Well, in Mexico City, which is where I was living before I came to Korea, um, typically there will be a lot of rain Okay. in, in like April and in May. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as you get uh, uh, closer to the summer, there there's maybe less rainfall and you'll get more sunlight, more sunshine. What are some national... Natural, natural disasters. Natural, natural disasters. disasters. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, since since there's beaches and the coast, you will get hurricanes. Okay. We do have hurricanes in Mexico, um, which can you know be cause a lot of damage. Uh, there's also there are also earthquakes, especially in Mexico City. Uh -huh. It seems like there's an earthquake every week. Wow. Um, they're usually not major and not life. Uh, threatening, but you can definitely get a lot of earthquakes there. Holidays. Okay. Tell us about one unique Mexican holiday. Uh, unique Mexican holiday. It's Dia de los Muertos. Muerto. Which, which, Death. Yes, that's right. It translates to English as Day of the Dead. Uh huh. And. Um, and th when is that? Uh, that is in uh, early November. Early it's, November. It's usually right around. Well, most people know Halloween, okay. so it's right after Halloween, and uh, we it's a day to remember our ancestors and remember any family members who have passed away. A lot of times what we do is we'll set up a small stand, kind of like this one here, okay. with, uh, with like pictures of the of our loved one, of whoever we want to remember, maybe some of their favorite items. Okay, and is it one day or one week? How long? It's usually, usually the day itself is one day, but one a lot day. of people will set up the, the altar. That's what I couldn't really kind of think of, the altar. Um, they'll set it up maybe a few days before and maybe leave it up a few days after. All right, very nice. Going into Unit 5, ports, mm -hmm. transportation, accommodation. So if we ever go to Mexico, here is some important and helpful information. Uh, what is the main international airport in Mexico? Uh, you would probably fly into Benito Juarez Airport. One more time? Benito Juarez. Which is where? It's in Mexico City. In Mexico City. Yeah, that is the big international Benito Juarez. Juarez. Okay. Right. What are some modes of transportation that we can well, Fine. from the airport, you can take a taxi. Yeah. Or you can jump on the metro. Okay. Which is like the, the railway, the subway. In okay. The Subways city. and trains and taxis. Yeah. And, and there's also city buses as well. Now, if we get away from the city sure. and into the countryside, yeah. what kinds of transportation can a traveler to Mexico find? There's uh, something called a combi, which is... Combi? Combi, yes. Okay. It's like C-U-M-B-I, combi. Combi. Right. And it's a uh, minivan with the seats taken out. Okay. And people can ride those. They grab onto the ceiling. There's the handles. Mm -hmm. And they just ride those to where they're going to get from you know, within the same town, usually. And cheap. Very cheap. Nice and cheap. Very cheap. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's move back to the city and we need a place to sleep. Okay. Can you tell us maybe one nice hotel and a uh, more moderately priced place to stay? Sure, yeah. The nice hotels in, in the cities in Mexico uh, there you'll find you'll find the Hilton or like uh, Marriott, okay. like a more expensive type of hotel, and then a more moderately priced. You'll have smaller hotels in old Mexican houses. 
Okay. So the architecture style is kind of like a colonial Spanish from nice. Spain style. And so it has the courtyard in the middle and the rooms around the courtyard. Is that like a bed and breakfast? Yeah, a lot of them will be bed and breakfast okay. or even hostels. And so at a bed and breakfast, what kind of amenities would we find? Usually uh, there's breakfast included. And a bed. And a bed. Right. Yeah, the bed and breakfast. <laughs> Wi-Fi, uh, computer, uh, somewhere to wash your laundry. and uh, Like friendly. home. Yeah, it's very much like a, like a guest house. Currency. What is the currency of Mexico? In Mexico, we use the peso. The peso. Mm -hmm. And do you know the exchange rate to the American dollar of the peso? I think it's right around 20 or 21 pesos for one U.S. dollar. Okay. So if we have 100 pesos... That's five U.S. dollars. Muy bueno. Si. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We are going to Mexico, and I want to say hello. Uh, what is a greeting that is used in Mexico? Well, in Mexico, we speak Spanish, mm. so you can just very simply wave and say hola. Hola. Morning, yeah. afternoon, evening. You can use that one any time hola. of the day. Yes. And that means? Hello. Hello. And how about good morning? Good morning, that's where it gets more specific. It's buenos días. Buenos días. And then good afternoon is buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Tardes. Tarde. Tarde. Tardes. Tardes. And then good evening is buenas noches. Buenas noches. Yes, that's right. Okay. And you said you wave. What mm -hmm. other gestures are common that are Positive, positive gestures okay. in Mexico. Okay, so positive gestures. Give us, give us two or three. Uh, in a restaurant, you can go like this to get the the server's attention. Okay. You see them in the distance. You just try to make eye contact. You go like that. No, no speaking. Just you. You one can. Finger. You can also. Um, you know. Hola. We, we you could say something like uh, joven, 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 joven. Okay. Joven means a young person. So this means come. This this means excuse me. Okay. Excuse, excuse me. me. Yeah. So uh, what's what's another one? You could also we do this. It means okay. This is okay. Yeah. If with, a, with a big circle here. Okay. Okay. And we have good gestures, and again, traveling, <laughs> this might not mean okay, and this might mean something very different. Yes. Uh, what gestures are impolite in Mexico? Well... Give us two. Sure. The one, it could be a, um, a lack of eye contact, so looking away when someone is talking to you. And what does that mean? It means it could either mean you're not interested or you like you just you just don't want to talk. It's rude. So especially when you make eye con when you shake hands, if you don't make eye contact, then that could be uh, considered uh, impolite or unprofessional. Okay. Anything else? One more. Uh, well, I said that this one is okay. Yeah. But there's a similar one that that is. Offensive, to say. And what would it be? It would be instead of like this. Yeah. It's more like this. So it's just a smaller. Smaller. Circle. Yeah. Okay. A smaller circle. If you do that to someone, uh, it it just means something very very mean. Mean. Very mean. Very mean. Yes. <laughs> Rude. Yes. Okay. Yes. So do this. Okay. But not this. Right. In Mexico. <laughs> Uh, customs. Customs are different in every country. Sure. Can you tell us, like in Korea, one custom, no shoes inside. <laughs> what is a custom in Mexico? Well, in Mexico, people maybe don't have as much personal space. Maybe it's not as important in Mexico as in other countries. The bubble? 
Right, yeah. Usually in, in a lot of, for example, English-speaking countries, mm. you want to maintain the distance. In Mexico, yeah, like distance is still there, but mm. it's not, it's, it's certainly closer. And when people shake hands, for example, there's more touching involved, so they'll go like this, or okay. they'll go like this, you know? So and the so farther like, up, the more friendly you are? Basically, yeah. Yeah, it's people are, are much more likely to show uh, their physical affection with people, even if it's not a romantic relationship. And some countries kiss on the cheek. Do they do that in Mexico? In Mexico, uh, yeah, there is kissing on the cheek, typically between men and women. Okay. It's just one kiss. Hello. Yeah, one kiss. So even in, instead of, um, even if you're meeting someone for the first time, mm. um, typically if it's a social, so not a professional situation, but... If you introduce me to one of your friends, instead of shaking hands, I might just tap her on the shoulder, do a quick, you know, okay. kiss on the cheek, and, and then just leave it. All right, so there you go. That's that's good to know. Uh, religion. Okay. What religions are practiced in Mexico? Mexico is the most Catholic country in the world. Let wow. Tell you what I mean by that? I mean that the country of Mexico has more Catholic people or people who practice mm -hmm. religion than in any other country in the world, including in Italy. Do you know what the percent is? Oof. Um, the last estimation I saw was certainly more than 90%. Wow. Certainly and are you Catholic? I'm not. No. I'm not so you are not the traditional Mexican. I am certainly not. <laughs> I got that a lot. <laughs> now we are traveling in Mexico. We want to do some sightseeing. Mm -hmm. uh, where is a good place to go sightseeing in Mexico? Uh, Mexico has uh, a lot of um, indigenous communities, mm. and the the indigenous people today are the descendants of, um, you know, for lack of a better word, ancient civilization. So you'll have pyramids in Mexico. Pyramids. So, yeah, pyramids, especially from two. Uh, different indigenous groups. Uh, there's the uh, the Aztecs. Aztecs. There's a large Aztec city just outside of Mexico City called Teotihuacan. One more time. Teotihuacan. 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 Yeah. And that's Aztec. That that, that's an Aztec that is Aztec the culture. The well, they, they're even older than the Aztecs. Uh, they're the Teotihuacaneos. Okay. But the Aztecs used that city. I see. Uh, to be their their central city in their empire, and so the ruins are still there. There's the the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon are the names in English. Uh, the Avenue of the Dead is the street that connects the two, and it's just a giant giant city. And then farther south, there's some other pyramids, uh, you know, ancient cities. There's Chichen Itza, which is a, Itza. a, Mayan, a Mayan city. So, okay, so we have the Aztecs and the Mayans. They were, and yeah, they were the two Also famous. pyramids? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're different from the pyramids of Egypt. They're not the triangle, necessarily, but more of like the a flat or something. Flat earth, or so. yeah. Okay. Landmarks. Mm -hmm. What are some famous landmarks that we can see? You well, see it, you say, that's Mexico. <laughs> um, I mentioned Mexico is, has, has the most number of Catholic people okay. in the world. So there's churches everywhere. Uh -huh. And these churches, the oldest church in the Americas is in Mexico City, actually. And the name? Uh, La Catedral. La Catedral. La which is the cathedral we call it in Mexico City. Yeah. La Catedral. Catedral. Cathedral. Yeah. Cathedral. 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 Yeah. Okay. And it's in the center square of, of Mexico City. Mm. And the Pope recently came to Mexico City about a year and a half ago and gave Mass there. Right. So, um, I, I'm not Catholic, but I was definitely very, very in, just in, impressed by that because it's the, the, the head of the Catholic religion and the oldest church in Mexico City. And millions of people from all over the country went to church that day. Uh, one other one, one, one more landmark. Sure. Let's see. There's a lot of um, a lot of natural beauty. In okay. Mexico. And so, in, there's a lot of really famous beaches. Uh, my favorite beach is one in the state of Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Called uh, Puerto Escondido. It's a very famous place for surfing. If oh, wow. people like to. Surf yeah, there. I do. And that's. My next question, sure. what, what are some activities that people do in, in Mexico? 
A bit of everything. There's, let's see, the, the national sport of Mexico is football, the soccer. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people like to play soccer. Um, in addition, people like to dance and, uh, and sing. Is there a Spanish uh, name for a, a certain dance in Mexico? Yeah. In Same? Mexico, there's, there's a few. There's uh, Quebradita, okay. which is a dance um, for the, the northern Mexico style of music. Um, people in Mexico also like to dance the dances of other countries, especially salsa. Okay. Uh, salsa, and uh, you'll find people who dance uh, tango. Well. Tom. Okay. Yeah. Right. Question four sure. on unit seven is where is a good place to do an activity that you enjoy? So in my case, I do. I do like to surf. I'm not good, but uh, you already answered that question. Where is a good place to do an activity that you enjoy? Mm, well, I enjoy going to uh, craft breweries. Okay. And in uh, and so where is a good brewery? Well, in Mexico City, there's a lot of there's a bit there's a whole neighborhood in Mexico City called uh, called La Condesa, and uh, it has a lot of a lot of uh, uh, bars and clubs. It's a very big famous nightlife neighborhood. Right. There's a lot of uh, pubs there that serve craft beers and micro breweries as well. All right. Another question in, in, in this book mm -hmm. is we talk about people watching <laughs> and that's an activity that you can do for free but and you can do it almost anywhere but where would you suggest where do you think is a good place to go people watching in Mexico the most interesting variety of people sure so in the country of Mexico, uh, especially in like in the region that I'm from, uh, there's a lot of little towns, and each little town has its own uh, like a like a park, like a really big park in the center of the town. Okay. And it's really cool to go there and sit on the bench because you you can just get a really good idea for how the people live there. Right. Um, there's people who work, obviously work in the town, and during uh, during their break from work or la siesta, they'll just walk through the park for a little bit. There's kids who go there after school and eat ice cream. Mm. Um, a lot of the towns will have like a gazebo right in the center, so a lot of musicians perform there too. Okay. So it's just a nice way to get the day. So the central area of most towns, the parks. The park, yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to Unit 8, the last unit of our research, music, pop culture, and famous people. Mexico, I know, is quite famous for different types of music. Mm -hmm. What kinds of music are popular in, in Mexico? Uh, in the north of Mexico, there's, uh, there's some really... Uh, famous um, the, the type of music is called norteño, which just norteño? means northern music. Okay. Uh, if you ever see, you know, like Mexican guys in like in cowboy hats with with like the the the, the boots, mm -hmm. um, usually there's you know guitars and there's horns and there's like an accordion as well. It's that that's the kind of style that a lot of people. Uh, think about right um, that that type of music actually has a lot of roots in German music like uh -huh. in polka music oh, okay because um, Texas used to be Texas in the United States it used to be part of Mexico and there were a lot of uh, German immigrants living in Texas mm -hmm. at the time. and so there's a lot of it just influence there as well combining with the traditional instruments and style of Mexico so it's just a really fun kind of style to listen to right the next question, famous people. Who would you like us to know about that comes from Mexico? Um, so, one is an actress who okay. won uh, an Academy Award, which is an American Award, an mm -hmm. Oscar Award, uh, for, the, for the movie 12 Years a Slave. Uh, the actress name is Lupita Nyong'o. 
And you can eat the nyongo. 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 And you're thinking nyongo. That's not. A, that doesn't sound very. Sounds nice. a bit African, actually. And it is, yeah, because her her father, um, he was a professor in Mexico City, when and and uh, it, she was born there. In Mexico City, so she's okay. a Mexican person. I think initially she was but her her father and her mother are Kenyan. Okay, uh, I'm I'm pretty confident about that. So I she's 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 yeah, Mexican well, by birth. Exactly. Yeah, but that's that's those are the kinds of stories that a lot of people maybe don't think about when they think of Mexico. Yeah, well, yeah, it's sure. Variety and the world is getting smaller and absolutely. more connected, and it's a changing planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, uh, give, give us one uh, more. Uh, Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Kahlo. Now, she's, she's an artist? A, yeah, she's a painter. Mm. Uh, also from Mexico City. <laughs> and she uh, just painted a lot of famous uh, works over the years. And, and she, she is dead. She passed she is, away? She did. Yeah, she did. How long ago? Oh, I would say probably about... 60 years ago. 60 years ago, yeah. but still very famous. Definitely. Who is the president of Mexico? The current president of Mexico is Enrique Peña Nieto. Okay, I'll ask you to repeat that one time. Sure. His name is Enrique Peña Nieto. Okay, and when did he become the president? He became president five years ago, and in Mexico... We do elections every six years for the president, which means that in 2018 will be the next presidential election. So they only get one term? Yes, okay. they get one term. I see. Subcultures. What is a subculture in Mexico? Many people in Mexico, uh, well, a lot of people like football. Soccer. Yes, uh-huh. But there's a growing number of people who really enjoy rugby. And there's a league of rugby in Mexico. Okay. Which might come as a surprise because people usually think of rugby as a sport in Australia or in you know, New Western Zealand. Europe. Yeah. yeah. So otherwise, uh, there's a lot of rugby fans in Mexico. Okay. And Luis, the last question. Yes. The national flower. What is the national flower of your country? The national flower of Mexico is the dahlia. The dahlia. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, what, what does the dahlia look like? It's small. It, it, it has pink petals. Okay. And it looks a bit like a raspberry. And do you know what the meaning is of this flower? I do not. You do not? <laughs> I do not know. Do not. Yeah, I do not know. Okay, so there you go. Now you have one more research question. You need to research what the meaning of the Dahlia, the national flower of Mexico, is. Yes. Luis, muchas gracias, amigo. Thank you. Thank gracias. you very much. And until next time, my name is Stephen Walker. This is Tell Me About It, 40 Questions. Bye-bye.